All right, guys, welcome to my shop. We're going to get right into it and kind of go through everything we've been looking at over the last week. I know you guys are very curious to understand what happened, as I was. Uh, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to Sonics. Uh, these guys got back with me immediately after I submitted my concerns about the rotor failure. And so we've been exploring this thing over the last week. And uh, we've come up with several ideas, but I think we have a pretty good idea of what is probably the biggest contributing factor here. Um, this control rod right here, this is not the standard control rod for the rudder. Now, Sonics does use a push rod similar to this, but it's not the same. Looking over at the plans here, if we compare the angles of the push rod to what is actually diagrammed here, what you find is that the angle is different, okay? So it is a much steeper inclination here. Uh, same thing if we go to this right here and compare it on this little lateral view, you can see that the stock control rod goes down at about at that angle and this one does this. Now that doesn't tell the entire story because the pivot to pivot angle is fairly similar, but again, it's not exactly the same. And the other thing is that it clearly didn't fit well because we've got these little clevis pins that have about five washers on each of them. And you'd have one there and one there. And so clearly it didn't fit very well because he had to really shim this thing up. Additionally, the push rod is supposed to mount underneath the control horn, so it should be underneath here. He had it on top, and that can have some interesting effects. So one of the things that happens as your tailspring goes up and down, you would expect that your push rod also goes up and down. And if it's bottom mounted, as it goes up, you can see this little horn here would actually push into the control rod. So in theory, it would actually push the control horn up. When you've got it mounted on top, it's actually going to sort of lever it down. And so depending on the geometry of this, that could have been causing a downward force every time the spring went up and down. Now in practice, I'm not sure that was happening. I actually went back and I took the rear uh, spring up and I dropped it on the ground from several inches to see what would happen. And it didn't actually make this move very much. What did make it move, and this is really interesting, was turning the wheel specifically to the right. Now, if I pulled on the control cables by pushing the rudder pedals, this actually stayed put. If I took the rudder and moved it back and forth, this mostly stayed put. But when I took the control rod and moved it this way to the right, it caused a severe downward force that was prying this open. And so what we gathered from that is that probably in ground operations, probably in landings, if there was even a little bit of rightward deflection, this was having a severe force pulling it downwards. And so ultimately that probably caused it to fail. Now this probably didn't fail in one shot. This probably failed sort of sequentially, rivet and rivet over time until we finally got to this point. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to separate the control horn and the lower rib from the rudder. All right, so we've got this thing removed. And like I said, I took out the entire assembly so we could see how it failed. And of course, as you can see, basically all the rivets had failed on that side. There was just a couple at the very end that seemed like they're somewhat intact. That one's starting to pull loose. The ones on the other side actually look okay, uh, but this was the side that was being pried down by the rod like we talked about. So it was clearly pulling down on that side first and then these would have eventually failed. So that's what we're looking at. I looked at the rivets. The rivet lengths actually look pretty good uh, comparable to other rivets I've looked at in the aircraft. So I don't know that that was the problem. There's dimpling at each hole. In other words, it looks like it's just been pulled straight out like we've talked about previously. So I think we know how it failed. Um, the question is, you know, what else is involved with this? The other thing that we're looking at is the height of the rudder relative to the fuselage of the aircraft. So one of the things that Sonics pointed out was that in my airplane, it seemed like the rudder was actually sitting a little bit high relative to the fuselage. They should be about level right here at the control horn. And uh, certainly it does look like it's probably about 10 millimeters high. So that may require me rebuilding the rudder in order to do it right. And uh, I'm going to look at that a little more carefully once we get things back together. What I'm going to do, I've ordered new parts. I've ordered a new horn. I've ordered a new rib, um, all the hardware associated. What I'm going to do is sort of clico everything together, sit it on the airplane, put the new push rod on there, the actual Sonics push rod, and see what happens. If it's still pulling, then I probably do need to drop the rudder down a little bit. And if that's the case, I'm probably just going to go ahead and rebuild the whole rudder. So now we're just waiting on parts and uh, this is not the conclusion, but I think we have a lot more information than what we started with. Listen to everybody who sent in comments. I really appreciate it. We got a lot of helpful insights and information. 
I hope everybody learned something. This has been a really good conversation starter and uh, maybe even save a life. So everybody fly safe.